Welcome Odessa Christian Faith Center. We are so glad that you have decided to join with us tonight. We have an excellent service planned for you. And even though we are sad that you are not be able to be with us here tonight, you are gonna be able to join with us in spirit. We have everything planned, just like you normally enjoy it on Wednesday night. We're gonna have praise and worship, tithes and offerings, and an amazing service from your pastor. Psalms 18 verse two says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my savior, in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and he is always with me. Wherever you are, the presence of God is going to be with you. And right now, wherever you are in your house, I want you to stand up. I want you to be able to raise your hand and enter into praise and worship with us tonight.
Lord, for your goodness, your joy. Celebrate. 
tonight, Lord, we are held safely. You are great and greatly to be praised.
Amen. Give him praise. He is the great I am. Point your hands to these prayer requests as we lift them before our Heavenly Father tonight. Our Father, we thank you that you are a wonderful, magnificent Heavenly Father. We thank you that you have already provided everything we could need through your grace and through your mercy. Father, we thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to shed his blood that we might have healing and health, that we might have salvation, that we might have reconciliation. Lord, we lift these prayer requests before you tonight knowing that you are going to go and make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, I thank you that when you took those stripes on Calvary's cross, you shed your blood. Not that we are going to be healed, but that we are already healed through the price that you paid on Calvary's cross. We thank you in advance for your miracle working power. We thank you for these people that we are lifting before you tonight, knowing that there will be praise reports as a result of answered prayer here tonight. And we thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Give him praise tonight. We are so glad that you have joined with us tonight, and we are going to have a great service, and it is already well on its way. And the scripture that came to my heart today was Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. And it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go before you. He will never fail you and he will never abandon you. See, in this time of trials for our nation right now and for us personally, you can take solace in knowing that your heavenly father is already going before you and making a way. And the other thing is this, is that this is 2020. This is our year of growth as a church and a great sign of growth and maturity is that you don't have to be afraid of things anymore. And see, as a church, we're going to push forward all the time. And we're going to push forward knowing that our Heavenly Father is going before us, personally going before us and making a way. And we thank you for that. As a church, we are continuing to push forward. And as a church, this week in Harvest, we had 12 salvations. Hello, Odessa Christian Faith Center, and thank you for joining us. Every week on Sundays and Wednesdays, you can join us live using the OCFC app, OCFC.org, and Facebook. Our children's services will be made available on OCFC.org and our YouTube channel at 8 a.m. on Sundays and 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. Our 180 service tonight will occur at 8.45 p.m. on Wednesday night after the adult service. It'll be available right here on our live stream. Starting tomorrow, we will be putting out content on a daily basis through our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channels for all age groups, preschool, kids, kids, teens, and adults. If this is your first time to join Odessa Christian Faith Center, you can go to ocfc.org forward slash guest to find out more about our church. Go to ocfc.org forward slash Spanish after each service to find a Spanish interpretation of that service. Also, if you have prayer requests, just send them to ocfc at ocfc.org and we will forward them to our intercessory prayer team. Thank you for giving to the legacy. The total we've given has been $5,073,222. Well, good evening, OCFC family. God bless all of you. Welcome to OCFC tonight. Let me remind you, God loves you. God is for you. God is on your side. And I got some good news as well. Your best days are definitely not behind you. Your best days are yet to come. So we're so glad that you joined with us tonight. Let me just explain why we had to do tonight the way we're doing it. Because we heard that our mayor was going to make a proclamation for beginning for today. And I had to go ahead and make a decision yesterday because that final decision would not be made until 3 p.m. today as to what he was going to do as to the lockdown of our city. And so that proclamation came out this afternoon, and uh, they've exempted churches. And so uh, we're going to have church Sunday. I just want you to know that right now. Now, the one thing they've asked us to do is to keep three feet apart. Well, we have a 1,200 seat sanctuary. We have three services, so we can accommodate that very easily. So I'm just letting you know up front, unless something else happens that we're unaware of, 
We're going to have our church services Sunday, but we did this because we, we would not have enough time. If they did not exempt churches for tonight, we, we just didn't have enough time. So that's why we've done what we're doing. That's why we have done what we have done. Uh, we've already had our children's service. In fact, we already had some feedback that the kids saw the service. I think it was on at 6 p.m. tonight on uh, our uh, live streaming, our website. And uh, so we're live streaming tonight. And then right after this service at 845, then our youth is going to have their service right here from the sanctuary, live streaming the service tonight at 845. So we got you covered tonight. It's all done. We got great people, great staff, great volunteers helping us all day long to prepare for tonight and get everything taken care of. So thank you for joining with us tonight. Thank you for being with us. Let me just remind you, you are the best congregants in all the world. There's nobody better than you. I just want you to know that. Now, I'm going to ask you to prepare your heart right now to receive our Wednesday night tithes, offerings, and gifts of love. Now, you understand that certainly the church requires money to be able to go forward. I know you know that. And, I, you know, I've had a calmness in my heart all day long that our tithes and offerings would not go down tonight, but I've had a premonition or a word from God. Really, I shouldn't use the word premonition. I've had a word from God that our tithes and offerings are going to go up for tonight. Why? Because you're the best congregation in all the world. You understand the signs of the times. You understand why we had to do this tonight, the way we're doing it, live streaming, not having our congregation here. So I know that you're going to do what's on your heart, what God's already prepared your heart to do. But let me just read several scriptures from the Message Bible. I love these verses from the Message Bible. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 24 and 25. This is Jesus in Mark 4, 24 and 25, Message Bible, he says, listen carefully to what I am saying. You ever heard me say that? I say it all the time. He says, listen, listen carefully to what I am saying and be wary of the shrewd advice that tells you how to get ahead in the world on your own. Be careful. Be careful what you're listening to. He said, be wary of this shrewd advice that tells you how to get ahead in the world on your own. Jesus is saying, pay attention here. Listen to what he says. He says, giving, not getting, is the way. Amen. Did you catch that? Amen. Giving, not getting, is the way. See, during this time of our services weekly, it's not that we're giving to get. No, I, I, I don't believe that. I believe you're more well-trained than that. No, we are getting to give. Why? Because we live by the law of seed, time, and harvest, which you'll see in Genesis 8.22. That's the law this church lives by. That's the church that we, in this church, the congregants, the pastoral team, this is how we live our lives, by the law of seed, time, and harvest. You sow a seed, and everything in life is a seed. You give it time, and what happens? Harvest comes up. And so we understand the principle, but when we come to church, when we have this time of being able to sow our tithes, offerings, and gifts of love, it's not a matter of giving to get. It's a matter of getting to give. So he says, giving, not getting, is the way. Listen to what he says now. He says, generosity begets generosity. Like produces like. Same thing. Whatever you sow, that's what comes back into your life. Whatever you plant, that's what comes back into your life. Generosity begets generosity, and he closes by saying stinginess impoverishes. And so don't, 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 don't let the world influence you. Don't let their shrewd advice, their seemingly shrewd advice tell you how to get ahead on your own. Getting ahead on your own, what is that defined as in the Bible? P-R-I-D-E, that's pride. No, we want to stay submitted to God. We want to stay humble before God. We want to follow His principles, follow His Word. And as we do that, what happens? Seed, time, and harvest. We sow the seed because we get to give. We give it time and the harvest comes back into our lives. Can I have an amen? amen. 
I can I have a little louder amen? Come on. I didn't hear you out there. There you go. All right. You ready? All right. Now, we're going to show you how you can give tonight. Certainly, you can give through our website. You can give using your debit or credit card through our website, ocfc.org. Certainly, you can also give with your debit or credit card by texting to give. And we know some of you still give by checks. Uh, that's fine. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is get yourself an envelope, write out your check tonight, and then get yourself a stamp, and tomorrow put it in the mail. Or if you want to, you can bring it by our offices. We will be here tomorrow as we are every day, 8.30 to 5. You can bring it or you can mail it whichever way you want to give tonight, but we know in this time tonight, most of you will be using either texting to give or giving through our website. Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. So take your time in doing that. I'll give you a few more seconds here, and then we're going to pray over our tithes and offerings. We're going to trust God that this, as I know in my heart, this is going to be a better offering than normal. Why? Because you're great people and you get to give. We're not giving to get, we get to give. That's right. And that's this opportunity that God has given each and every one of us. So those of you that are giving tonight, take your envelope. If you have an envelope or a check, if you made out a check, or if you're giving through the website or you're texting to give, just lift your hand tonight because you don't have anything in your hand. Just lift your hand to, the, to heaven, and I'm going to take my offering envelope in my hand, and I'm going to lift it to heaven with you tonight, and I'm going to pray over it. Father, we honor you tonight. Lord, we exalt you. We worship you. We glorify you. You are El Shaddai God, the God who is more than enough. And Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, knowing that Jesus is our high priest. And so Jesus is our high priest. You take everything we say, everything we pray, everything we give, and you present it to the Father. So we present these tithes, offerings, and gifts of love to you, Jesus, our high priest, believing that you will present them to the Father and you will worship him with them on our behalf. As pastor of this great, wonderful, loving, generous, giving church, Lord, I stand in agreement with all tithers and givers tonight, believing with them for the corresponding 30, 60, 100 full return to come back into our lives and that you're meeting all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, we set these monies apart unto you to worship you and that they would be used to minister the good news of Jesus in Odessa, the Permian Basin, and the world. And through the giving of all these monies, Lord, we say thank you for blessing us for the purpose of our being a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Just worship the Lord for a few moments as our band uh, plays an offertory. Just worship God as they do that right now. Hallelujah. Well, unfortunately, we had designated tonight as a worship and healing service. Uh, I'm going to minister the Word of God. Got plenty of time to do everything that needs to be done tonight. So I'm going to minister God's Word. I'm going to pick up where I left off last week, but at the end of my teaching, certainly we're going to pray our prayer for the nation. We're going to pray for uh, our government. We're going to pray for our medical people, pharmaceutical industries. We're going to pray for all these things, but we're also going to pray after that for those of you who need healing. So even though we're not here physically, one with another, you know, prayer knows no distance. And so we're going to take different subjects at the end of my teaching tonight. After I pray for the things I just said, I'm going to pray for. And we're going to pray for different subjects, different areas, different things that some things God's already placed onto my heart and that during that time, he'll place other things on my heart as well. And so just hold on. 
be steady. Let's get the Word of God into our hearts. Let's teach the Word of God, and let's allow the Word of God to saturate our thinking tonight. Pray with me right now. Our Father, we exalt you and we worship you. Thank you, you, Father, that your Word is forever settled in heaven. Your Word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. The entrance of your Word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. So, Holy Spirit, I look to you tonight. And I firmly trust you and have confidence in you that you will rise within me with the gift of pastor, teacher, thinking through me, speaking through me, and that you will give every single person tonight under the sound of my voice spiritual eyes to see, spiritual ears to hear, revelation truth. That you will give everyone a mind to understand what's taught and the heart that will believe. Jesus, you are the Lord head of your church, the Lord head of this church, and we say that everything that's said and done tonight will bring honor to you, will glorify you, and will exalt you. And we thank you, Father, for all these things. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Well, from the beginning of this year, we have been sharing with you on Wednesday nights, first and foremost, who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do through Christ. That's our mission in this house, to teach people who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, what they can do through Christ. And back in January, we taught originally from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 that tells us that as Christians, we are now raised up seated together in heavenly places in Christ. And so I've shared with you that is an identity statement. Our true identification is no longer in self, but it's now in Christ. And we know from Ephesians 1, 3, the Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So listen, if we've been raised up and seated together in heavenly places in Christ, the Bible tells us in the last part of 1 John 4, 17, that even as Jesus is, so are we, all right? Jesus is seated at the right hand of majesty on high, our Father. If He is, and if we are raised up and we're seated together with Christ in heavenly places, that means you and I, as sons and daughters of God, we're seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. If Jesus is righteous, we're righteous. If Jesus is holy, we're holy. If Jesus is at peace, we're at peace. If Jesus is resting, we're resting. If Jesus is joyful, we're joyful. If Jesus is happy, we're happy. If Jesus has been healed from all wounds that he incurred at the cross, We're healed from all wounds, all sickness, and all disease. Because as Jesus is, so are we. We're seated with him in the heavenly places. He's healed. We are as he is. We're healed. He doesn't have coronavirus tonight. Jesus does not have any type of virus in his body right now. And by faith, we're seated with him. And all those blessings in heavenly places have now been imparted to each and every one of us. That being said, for the last several weeks, we've been sharing with you that the enemy is a man or a spirit, rather, by the name of Satan. He's the devil. He is God's enemy. And if he's God's enemy, he's your enemy and he's my enemy. In fact, the Bible says, I believe it's Proverbs 8, 13, that the fear of God is to hate evil. Well, (laughs) excuse me for just a second, but Satan is the personification of evil. And so fearing God is inclusive of hating the devil. And so you need to hate him and everything he stands for. But what he's trying to do in our world today, let me just depart for just a few moments before I get back to where I want to go tonight. The underlying tone of this coronavirus, is it, it's not just the virus. I'm not making light of the virus. What's the underlying tone of this virus? It's fear. That's right. It's fear. 
There's fear that has gone all over this world. It's everywhere right now. In fact, I've limited and I've told my church that I, I used to be a news junkie and I'm down to 10 or 15 minutes of news a day. And uh, right now, because of all the fear being promulgated on our media, I'm down to about five minutes. That's all I can take. Right. I can't take much more as a child of God. It offends my spirit. Because why? Fear is being promoted. Fear is continuing to come at us from every angle. That is what the enemy is after, is to bring our nation, our city, our region, our world to a standstill. But, you know, there, there's one thought I did have. You notice that all kinds of constraints are being placed on people. We want the restaurants to close, and we want this to close, we want that to close. Have you noticed they haven't closed down Wall Street? Hello? Hello? Why? It's a money thing. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a money thing. Let me tell you, the enemy is harsh. And the fear that he has brought. What is this? Running to the grocery store at 7.30 a.m. and standing in line for an hour with 200 other people. What's that about? I mean, what, what's this about storing up toilet tissue? What, have we reverted back to the seventh grade and we're going to take toilet tissue and go out and, and toilet roll uh, Billy Bob and Mary Sue's house? Is that what we're going to do? Come on. Let, let me help you out tonight. Toilet tissue is not going to help people with coronavirus. Why? Coronavirus does not produce diarrhea. Hello? Hello? Mm. Come on, we need to wise up. Come on, we're losing all common sense right now. And really, let me say it this way, we're, really, we're, we're losing spiritual sense. It takes churches to rise up. It takes pastors and ministers of the gospel to rise up and stand up and start attacking this stuff and showing how ignorant we're being and how afraid we're being and saying, no, we have the answers from the word of the living God. God has the answer to all of this. And the first answer is to overcome fear. God did not, has not given us a spirit of bondage again to fear. But the spirit of sonship whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 2 Timothy 1.7, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound are a disciplined mind, a disciplined lifestyle, disciplined not to get off in fear. Discipline not to go off with the rest of the world and act like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. Come on. We're smarter than this. We're stronger than this. Greater is he who is in us than he that's in the world. And let me just remind you what the Hebrews writer told us in Hebrews 13. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can I have an amen? He's the same yesterday. He walked on water. Come on now. He healed the demoniac. He healed the leper. He healed the blind. He healed the deaf. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So that being said, you have to understand, as I've been teaching for the last month or so, we are in a spiritual war. And it's highly epitomized right now in what's going on. The enemy is using fear to bring people to a standstill, to hunker down. Again, I'm not, I'm not making light of the coronavirus. Please, use wisdom. Use prudence. I'm not suggesting you not do those things, but let's rise up in the spirit. Let's rise up and hear from God. Let's, let's rise up and, 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 and flow with the Holy Spirit and quit allowing fear to intimidate us. Because one of the definitions there in 2 Timothy 1.7 of fear is intimidation. The enemy comes to intimidate by using fear. All right, let me move on now with my lesson. I got all that said tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't write me a bunch of nasty emails. Because I won't mind. they get screened and I don't read them. Hallelujah. So let me take you tonight to... Um, in the King James Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. We've been looking at these verses. We looked at these verses last week. We're going to review these verses again. In Hebrews 6, verses 10 through 12, 
Paul writes, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Literally, be powerful in the Lord. Is that what the Greek says? And in the power, the Greek says the ruling power of God's might. Might. This is dunamis, the, the ability to overcome any challenge, the ability to overcome uh, any, any uh, trial, any test, uh, anything coming against us. It's the ability to meet it head on. The same way David, when he saw Goliath, what did he do? He ran towards him. He ran towards the problem. He ran toward the challenge. He ran toward, towards the giant. Be powerful in the Lord and in the ruling power of God's dunamis, His miracle-working, overcoming power. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the deceptions of the devil, the subtleties of the devil, the tricks of the devil, to be able to stand against it. He says in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. These are the four classifications of demonic spirits against spiritual wickedness or wicked spirits in heavenly places, in high places. And so you have to stand. God, God doesn't want his church to run. To hide, to get in fear, and to hunker down. That, this is not what David did. This is not what the men of old in the Old Testament did. They did not bow down. Daniel did not bow down to the king's edict that the king gave that edict based upon some, some men that were jealous of Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow. That's right. That's right. That's they did not bow their knee to the evil, to the enemy. They did not bow. Come on, where are the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's today? Where are the Daniels today? Where are the Elijahs today? The Elishas today? Where, where are the Abrahams today? Where are they? Come on, let's rise up. Like President Roosevelt said, I quoted this Last Sunday, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. You don't have to be in fear. Don't fear fear. Come on now. Let me take you to um, what we're studying right now in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Paul writes, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. So again, he said the weapons of our war. He said to us a while ago that we're in a spiritual fight. That's what he said to us. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we don't war against the flesh. So he's making it clear we're still in a war. For the weapons of our warfare, we're in a warfare. They're not carnal. They're not human. They're not natural. He said, but they're mighty. They're mighty. They're mighty. Dynamis. They're mighty. Through God, not through our... Education, not, not through our religiosity, not through our uh, physical might or soulish might. No, they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then he tells us what the strongholds are. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of of Christ. So the strongholds that Paul addresses here are the strongholds that get in people's minds. The imaginations of the mind. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought. So he's talking about strongholds. He's not talking about the, the ethereal. He's not talking about the heavenlies here. He's talking about our minds. And so let me quickly run through these scriptures because I'm going to come back to one in particular and share some thoughts tonight that I believe the Lord's placed on my heart to help each and every one of us tonight. Let me take you to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 in the Passion Translation. And His fullness fills you. That's Christ's fullness fills us. Even though you were once, referring to who we were before we're born again. Before we become Christians, you were once like corpses, 
dead in your sins and offenses. It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion, the customs, and the values of the world, the world system. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 tells us that Satan is the god of this world. Little G-O-D of this world, that means the world system. 1 John 5.19 tells us that Satan controls the world system. He controls the world system. So when we come into the world born of our mother's womb, we're under the manipulation and the control of the world system which Satan lords over. He's the master, the God, little G-O-D, he's the master over the world system. The values of this world obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm that's a reference to the devil who fills the atmosphere, atmosphere around us, the first heaven, fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are disobedient to the truth of God. We were all disobedient. All of us. Why? Because we were born sinful because of Adam's sin. So we were all disobedient. He says the corruption that was in us from birth I just said that, was expressed through the deeds and desires of our self-life. We were selfish. We were corrupt because of Adam's sin. We were born that way. He said, we live by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds. We're talking about strongholds in the minds. By whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated, living as rebellious children subject to God's wrath like everyone else. Okay, let me take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We looked at these verses last week. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, again, Passion Translation, verses 9 through 11. Surely you must know that people who practice evil cannot possess God's kingdom realm. Stop being deceived. People who continue to engage in sexual immorality, idolatry, adultery, sexual perversion, homosexuality, fraud, greed, drunkenness, verbal abuse, or extortion will not, these will not inherit God's kingdom realm or reign. If people stay in this condition, they will not inherit God's kingdom realm. But listen to what he says. It's true that some of you once lived in those lifestyles. Notice he said, we once lived in those lifestyles. But now you have been purified from sin, made holy and given a perfect standing before God, all because of the power of the name of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and through our union with the Spirit of our God. So, when we were born, once again, we were born into sin with the sin nature. And so what took place until Jesus comes into our lives, even though God has already forgiven the world of all of our sins. You have to know it and you have to receive Jesus as your Savior so that those sins can be wiped out of your life and you can be given a brand new nature that you can be relieved of the sinful nature we're born with and, been, and you will be given a brand new nature, God's nature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any person be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're given a brand new nature. And so now we're forever in fellowship to God. We're forever connected to God through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit, we are forever connected to God. But I'm reading these verses because I'm letting you know that we are so adept from birth in these sinful actions, in many cases, they become strongholds in our minds. Maybe addictions get into your lives. And these addictions, before we physically act on an addiction, 
Where does it hit first? The mind. That's a stronghold. Now, the Bible tells us in Colossians 1.13, we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. So when you and I are born again, we are delivered from everything that's wrong with us. We're delivered spiritually. For some people, and I said this last Wednesday night, some people, let's say they've been smoking for 40 years, they get born again, they never smoke again. Some people keep smoking. Now, I can't give you the exact reason why it always happens this way, but I know it does. I've pastored now going on 39 years, almost 41 years in the ministry, and so I've observed thousands of people as a pastor teacher here in the Permian Basin, and I've noticed these things. But what I do know is no matter if the stronghold stays in you, if the habit stays in you, you are still delivered spiritually. Amen. You're delivered. But sometimes people just have to start walking it out. And that's the purpose of what I'm sharing with you tonight. That some of these things that we were born with in the sin nature, and even though we're born again, some of these things hang on to our flesh. They hang on by way of strongholds because that's all we know. That's all we've ever learned to live by. Let me take you back to Romans chapter 13 and verse 13. Again, Passion Translation. We must live honorably, surrounded by the light of this new day, not in the darkness of drunkenness. Mm. And that represents any substance abuse. Any substance abuse. And uh, debauchery. That, that's... Uh, that's just living a lifestyle that's just very corrupt. And then not in promiscuity and sensuality. That's very base conduct. Not being argumentative or jealous of others. Not being argumentative or jealous of others. Now, especially these last two, all of these can be strongholds in the believer's mind. But these last two, argumentative and jealous of others... These can be, these are works of the flesh, but they can still be strongholds in the mind because all of our lives before Christ, we have lived this way. We're argumentative, we're critical, we put people down, we're cynical. That is something that we grew up in and it has hung onto our lives as Christians. Why? That's the way it's always been for our lives and we've never made an attempt to make any changes to get rid of this behavior through tearing down these strongholds in our lives. Let me take you to uh, Galatians again here in the Passion Translation. Galatians chapter 5 and I'm reading for verse 19 through 21. He says, the cravings of the self-life. Now, re remember, we saw in Ephesians 2, before Christ, we live this self-life. We live this self-life. So Paul is saying here that the self-life is still here. It's, it, you may be a 50-year-old. When I say 50-year-old, I mean you've been a Christian for 50 years. You're spirit-filled, spirit-led, but you still have a self-life. That self-life will be in your life for the rest of your life until we go be with Jesus, but you don't have to yield to the self-life. You don't have to yield. It'll always be there, but you don't have to yield to it. That's what Paul taught in Romans chapter 7. Chapter 7 is very easy to understand when you understand he's coming from the standpoint of Christians trying to live the Christian life, which, by the way, if you're trying to live the Christian life on your own, it is impossible. Right. It's impossible. You can't do it. That's what Paul's talking about in Romans 7. Christians who try to live the Christian life on their own merit, their own uh, uh, ingenuity, their own uh, works, etc., you're going to fall short. You're going to be frustrated. And that's why Paul wrote Romans chapter 7. He shares with us that the thing that I want to do, I don't do. The thing I don't want to do, he says, I find myself doing. 
It's a dilemma that Christians have. But the dilemma does not have to be there. It can be short-lived in the Christian's life once you learn that Christ has already paid the price for everything in our lives. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. We are seated with Him. Quit getting up off that seat. You two are, you are to be resting in Christ with Him. And when you're resting in Christ, that means you're not working to make things happen. You're trusting Him. You're in faith. You're walking by faith. That's what faith is. Being seated with Christ knowing that he's already finished the work at Calvary, defeated every foe, defeated all these temporal works of the flesh. I say temporal because when we get to heaven, they won't be there. He defeated all these strongholds. He defeated Satan. Everything's defeated. But you have to learn how to walk this stuff out. That's what I'm doing tonight. So he says, the cravings of the self-life are obvious, sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, thoughts, pornography, pornography, it's in the mind, yeah. um, chasing after things instead of God, what's that? That's idolatry, uh, manipulating others. Oh, wow. wow. I could pull up a peck and spend three or four days on that one. You know what manipulating others is? And Christians do this. And sometimes Christians do it. They don't even know what they're doing. You know what manipulating others is? It's witchcraft. It's witchcraft. I bind up Pastor Don where he can't teach that prosperity. I bind up Pastor Don where he can't teach the grace of God, the love of God. That's witchcraft. Trying to bind me up. Who do you think you are? can't bind me up. No. I'm rubber, you're glue. Everything bounces off me and sticks on you. Come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just having fun with you. Come on now. Manipulating others. Hatred of those who get in your way. Ooh. It's a work of the flesh. But it comes from a stronghold that this is how we've always lived our lives. Senseless arguments. Same thing he said back in some of the verses I shared a moment ago from Romans 13. Senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, being envious of the blessings of others, no, oh, be happy for others. Yes. Why? Because if you're in faith, you're in the same line. That's right. If you're in faith for whatever they have, you're in that line. Don't just rejoice with them. Amen. Don't get upset. Murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and then anything else that he doesn't name, he says, and all other similar behavior. Okay? Now, Here's where I want to get tonight. Let me take you to this one. Let me, well, I'll tell you what, before I do that, uh, AVL department, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little transition here. I'm going to skip James 3. I'm going to come back to James 3, but I'm going to go ahead and go to Romans chapter 8. Let me take you to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, King James Version, verse 6. Look what he says. He says, for to be carnally minded... It's death. Death represents separation. Separation. So we can, even though the promises of God are yes and amen, they're ours. We can separate ourselves from these promises from ever manifesting in our lives. How? By staying carnally minded. By allowing the strongholds to dominate our thinking. And therefore controlling our behavior. So he says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded, 3 John 2, beloved. James says, I pray above all, I think, I'm sorry, John said, he said, beloved, I pray, I wish, I desire above all things that you prosper and that you be in health. Amen. Listen, listen. 
even as your soul prospers. Listen, for us to prosper the way, there, and by the way, there is no such thing as a prosperity gospel. No, there's the gospel of grace, the gospel of peace, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and this gospel will produce a prosperity, will produce a peace, will produce a joy, will produce a lifestyle that is commensurate with God's will for all of our lives. It will. Most definitely, it will. So he said, I desire above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul, mind, emotions, and will prosper. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to be spiritually minded means what? That you have to become spiritually minded in, in your mind, obviously, that you have to begin to renew your mind to what God has said. As your soul prospers. Your soul prospers how? By allowing God's word to begin to wash out the dirty. To wash out the corrupt. To wash out the manipulation. To wash out everything that we grew up in with the sin nature. And that stuff has hung on as a stronghold in our mind in some cases. So we have to begin to renew our mind. And then Paul said to us in Romans 4, through 24, to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I teach, I believe that's the subconscious mind. That you want your conscious mind to be renewed, but then you want it to get down into your subconscious mind because that's how people live. Amen. We just automatically do things from our subconscious mind. So let, let me take you to Romans chapter 12. I've quoted it. Let me, let me take you to it. Here in the King James, Romans 12, 2, he says, Be not conformed. Be not conformed to the world. What world? The world that Satan is the Lord over. The master over the world system. It's the world system he's talking about. Again, 1 John 5, 19, he controls the world system. So he said, don't be conformed to this world. The world system, how it thinks, its attitudes. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove, test, experience what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I like the way the Passion Translation uh, gives this. Let me read it to you here. He says, stop imitating. That's pretty, that's pretty powerful there. It's, it's very direct. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. How you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Now, as you renew your mind, as it gets down into your conscious mind and ultimately down into the spirit of your mind, which I believe is your subconscious mind, as it gets down there, what happens? These strongholds begin to evaporate because you begin to focus in on Jesus. You begin to focus in on the promises of God, the love of God the unmerited, unearned favor of God. You begin to focus in on the mercies of God. And in fact, here in Romans 12, 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, wholly acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. By the mercies of God, you begin to focus in on the goodness of God. Amen. Paul told us in Romans 2, 4, it's the goodness of God that leads man to repent. The word repent means to change your thinking. Yes. How can you change your thinking? You change your thinking by the hearing of God's word. Yes. It begins to permeate your conscious mind and the more you meditate and the more you hear and the more you meditate and the more you hear and the more you meditate and the more you hear what happens. It gets down into your subconscious mind. And all those strongholds that we used to live by that we say, well, I just can't change, Pastor. Yeah, you can. Right. Don't tell me that. Anybody can change. Now, it takes some effort. 
It takes our cooperation with God by His Holy Spirit. This is how we start breaking these strongholds in our lives. It's by the Word of God. You say, well, how about prayer? Yeah, you can pray. But Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, He said, if you'll continue in my Word, then shall you be my disciples. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. What's going to make you free, prayer or the truth? I'm not against prayer. I pray. I love prayer. One of my favorite pastimes in life. This church prays. We pray. But he didn't say prayer is what, brings, what breaks strongholds. He said the truth will do it. The truth coming into your mind. Now then, I'm going to close by taking you back to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, and we're going to look at beginning in verse uh, let's see, James chapter 3, verse 14. Look what he says. He says, but if you, now he's talking to Christians here. So the things I'm saying are legitimate because obviously if James and Paul have said these things, that Christians can be doing these things, that means I got the right crowd right now, that we can be doing these things. But see, we're here to help people. We're, we're here to bring freedom to people. That's what we want. So he said, but if you, verse 14, James 3, 14, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Lie not against what? The truth. Jesus said in John 17, 17 to the Father, sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. The word sanctify means set apart, make holy. Talking, he was praying for his disciples then and you and me now. Set us apart by his word because Jesus said his word is truth. Yes, it is. That's the truth. Facts, not all facts in our world today are not necessarily truthful. Mm, that's right. Not necessarily, but God's word is truthful. Okay? You, can, you can count on God's Word. God's Word will change your life. It'll change your heart. It'll change your mind. It'll change your thinking. It'll start breaking these strongholds in your mind that have been controlling your thinking and controlling your behavior. And I know you feel bad about things like that. I know you do. Or you wouldn't be listening to me right now. I know you do. God knows that too. That's why He has guys like me to help you by showing you the antidote, the solution. He said, if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. He said, this wisdom descends not from above, but it's earthly, it's sensual, it's devilish. It comes from the devil. It's all sensual. It's of the earth. It comes from the enemy. Look down. He says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. So powerful. What I want you to see from this is that a lot of Christians, they hear great messages from great ministers of the gospel, and they do their very best to apply what they hear, but then they go off and they have envy and strife and jealousy. They have all these things in their lives, and what they don't know is that they're unbeknownst to them, they have opened the door to the enemy. That's right. And that's my point tonight in all of this. To let people know we open the door. God doesn't open the door. Right. God does not use Satan as his messenger to teach us lessons. He doesn't use the devil to bring things that are harmful into our lives, to punish us or, or teach us. No, 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 no. That is religion. That's not Bible. That's not the doctrine of the Word of God. No, we open the door, and in many cases, it's unbeknownst to us. If you go back several weeks, I shared the different tactics of the devil. Here, I think I have them right here. Uh, let me just uh, share several with you. Uh, we found out that, uh, let's see, uh, we're not to give place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 27. James 4, 7 says resist the devil. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8 says 
Use your faith steadfastly against the devil. Uh, we found out that uh, the enemy uses deception. We found out that he's the accuser of the brethren. We found out that he's the tempter. We found out that Jesus said in John 8, 44, he's the liar. So see, he uses these manipulation tactics and these lies that, listen, I like to say it this way. You've heard many men say this. When Smith Wigglesworth said this, said this, Smith Wigglesworth said this, many other ministers, I still hear it a bunch today. You can't stop a bird flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest in your hair. That's right. So you can't stop all these thoughts from coming in. My point in saying that is, when an un, if you're a child of God, if an ungodly hits your mind, it's not you. You know why? You're a new creation. New creation in Christ. That's who you are. I started this lesson by sharing with you your true identification. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a new creation in Christ. When these idiotic, corrupt thoughts come to our minds, understand they're not you. But what happens is sometimes we think this is normal and we take these thoughts. We start taking them. And Jesus gave us a principle in Matthew 6. He said, why take thought saying? How do you start taking the thought? And you start saying it. Amen. You start saying it and saying it. And the thought now becomes a possible stronghold into your mind. And so we need to understand here that strife, bitter envying, all these different kinds of confusion and, and uh, uh, works of the flesh, either they're strongholds in our minds and we give weight to them or we just get off into the flesh, one of the two. But I'm dealing with strongholds tonight. And I shared last Wednesday night that sometimes many people grow up in homes where it's constant bickering, yelling, throwing stuff, yelling at one another, cussing at one another, uh, Constant strife. And so some people, some people actually grow up thinking that's normal. And they get into their own marriages and their own families and they just follow suit and they think it's normal. And they wonder why as a spirit-filled Christian, the devil keeps operating in their lives. Unbeknownst to them, we open the door to the devil. That's what the Bible teaches, every evil work. Listen, you will not, let, let me say if you're a married woman right now, and if your husband brought home a bushel full of rattlesnakes and just left them out in the house, sweetheart, would you stay in that house? I don't think so. You get out of there, lick of these split. You get out of there as fast as you could. You'd, you'd be gone. Anyone in their right mind would be gone unless you know how to deal with rattlesnakes. Some people can, but a good rattlesnake is a dead rattlesnake. That's a good one. The point being is you don't want to open the door to a rattlesnake. And that's what we do when we live in strife because it's a stronghold. That's just what we do. We just live this way. So God wants us to start renewing our mind to how he wants us to see him, see yourself, see what you can do, see the kind of authority that you have in your life. And let me just remind you tonight. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so maybe right now, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What are you eating? What are you eating out of your mouth? Let me go back to verse 20. Show, show me verse 20 here on the screens, if you will. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. You will be satisfied with what's coming out of your mouth if the word of God's coming out of your mouth and tearing down these strongholds Speaking the word. Start speaking the word to these strongholds. Call strife what it is. 
it is of the flesh. It, it's devilish. It's demonic. Start saying what it is and command it to come down. Bind it up in Jesus' name. Get rid of it and start speaking the word. I have a sound mind. I have a mind that's filled with the word of God. My mind is being renewed to the living word of God. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in this world. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Don't give in to the flesh. Don't give in to the strongholds. Don't give in to the demonic powers because greater is he who is in you than he that's in this world. Amen? Amen. You have the authority. You have the power. And it's all from the word of God. Father, I pray tonight that the word you've had me minister is a word that is in due season. And I pray that that word, Heavenly Father, will begin to produce fruit in all of our lives. The Lord, we have the power over the enemy through Christ. We have the power over strongholds through Christ, through the word of the living God. We have power over the works of the flesh through Christ, through the living word of God. And so I pray tonight, Lord, that the word you've had me minister, Lord God, has brought relief to us. It has opened up our spiritual eyes tonight. The Lord, we do have authority in this realm, this spiritual realm, that the enemy is under our feet and he's lying to us. He's deceiving us. He's been tempting us and telling us that fear is our normal MO, way to live every day. And it's not. We live by faith and not by fear. We live by faith and not by the five physical senses. So, Father, thank you tonight for helping all of us to walk out our life of faith by the Spirit, overcoming all these strongholds, all these works of the flesh, living by the Spirit, not fulfilling any desires of the flesh, as we give you, Lord, the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. If you're here tonight and you're watching and you've never accepted Jesus into your life, I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. If you've never confessed Jesus as your Savior, your Lord, tonight you want to, or at one time in your life you have, but maybe you've walked away. You're not where y'all will be right now, and you want to recommit your life to Him. Let me pray with you right now. Pray this prayer. I'm going to lead you in the prayer. Pray this prayer after me. Pray this. Jesus, I believe you died for me. On the cross, taking into your body all my sins. And after your death, three days later, you were raised from the grave. I turn from my life of sin and I turn to you. Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. I am now yours for all eternity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer tonight, especially for the very first time, congratulations. God loves you. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you here in church at 9 a.m., 1045 a.m. or 1230. Choose one of those three services this coming Sunday. Let me begin right now. I told you I was going to pray for those tonight that need prayer. I'm going to start by praying for those of you that you are bound by addictions. You are bound. We talked about that tonight, the strongholds. So if you have any addiction in your life right now, I'm going to ask you, if you can, stand to your feet right now and just put your hand over your heart as I pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, this is not your will that any of your children are living through the addicted lifestyle, whether it be sexual addiction whether it be drug addiction, uh, alcohol addiction, uh, nicotine addiction, uh, or other addictions. There's myriads of other addictions that we know that sometimes people have in their lives. So in Jesus' name, I break those addictions right now. I break them by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ. I command these addictions to die. I curse them at the root. I pull them up by the root right now from their lives. And I command them, command them roots and all to be cast permanently into the sea, never to come back. And I praise you for it, Jesus, giving you the glory. 
Amen. And if you're here tonight and you're suffering from insomnia, you're having a difficult time sleeping every night, have a hard time either getting to sleep or you get to sleep and you wake up very uh, just a few minutes, a few hours maybe after you go to sleep, you can't get back to sleep or your sleep is intermittent, uh, in and out, in and out, whatever it is, I'm going to pray for you right now. Jesus, for those who are having sleep insomnia, maybe even sleep apnea, Lord, any sleep problem, Lord, that they're de being deprived of their sleep. I command that to stop right now. In Jesus' name, devil, get your hands off their sleep right now. Get your hands off their sleep. And Lord, you said in Proverbs 3, 24, you give sweet sleep. You said in the book of Psalms, you neither sleep nor slumber. So Lord, there's no reason for us to stay up. If you are not sleeping or slumbering, we need to. And we pray right now for solid, solid sleep to begin tonight for these who have been suffering this dilemma. We receive it by faith, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Men with prostate problems, I'm going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, these men right now, they're suffering with prostate problems. I come against that right now in the realm of the Spirit. I take a authority and dominion over it. And I speak to these prostates in Jesus' name. I command you, if you're enlarged, to be reduced to your normal size. Whatever you are right now, whatever problem that you are producing in this body of any man, I speak to these prostates and I command you to be healed. I command the, the process right now to begin, right now, for these enlargements of these prostates to diminish and I command right now the prostate to work in line with the men's bladders, their urinary systems. I command their urinary flow to be strong and powerful. And I speak life right now into that part of their bodies, into their urinary flow, into their prostate, their bladder. I speak life, health, and healing to the glory of God, our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. That being said tonight, I'm going to pray with anyone tonight with incontinence. I'm going to pray with anyone right now. You have urinary problems, urinary infections. I want to talk. I want to pray right now uh, for anyone right now with any kind of bladder problems, men or women. I want to pray for you right now because I know that God wants to heal you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, for those with incontinence, I curse that incontinence right now. I demand it to stop. In Jesus' name. And I speak life right now to the urinary flow. I speak life and healing where there has been a urinary infection. We curse it. We loose it from them. And we command it cast into the sea permanently. And we speak healing where that infection has been. Be healed. Bladder be healed. Be made well. Be made whole to the glory of God our Father. For those who have some type of skin conditions tonight, you've got different skin conditions that are bothering you right now. Maybe they're unsightly to you. You want to get rid of them. God wants you well. Let's curse them right now at the root. So in Jesus' name, any and all skin conditions right now, we curse you at the root. We pull you up by the roots right now. We cast you into the sea permanently. And we speak right now healing into people's epidermis, their skin. We say right now for their skin to be healed. We call for new skin where there has been skin that has been maybe scarred or damaged. We speak new skin, pristine skin to come about. In Jesus' name, moles and, and uh, any kind of uh, tumors or any type of uh, bumps on their bodies that need to be off their bodies, we command you to go in Jesus' name. We command healing right now in their entire, the biggest organ of the body, the skin system, the epidermis. We speak healing, wholeness, wellness, and health to the glory of God, our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. When I was gone a few months ago, I did a Wednesday night on video, and I, this is coming up again. If you're watching me tonight and you and your husband, uh, you're having trouble conceiving, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray right now for any of these couples that are having a difficult time conceiving. This is their heart's desire. 
And Father, you said that children are a heritage. They're a blessing of the Lord. And so whatever the problem is, if it's in the man, the woman, whatever it is, we speak to their reproductive systems right now. We speak healing, Lord, into their total reproductive systems. And we command healing, wholeness, and wellness. And we command these children to start coming about through their loins, through their womb. And we thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Last thing I'm going to pray for, I just got this. If you're having trouble with any type of nervous condition, any type of muscular condition, uh, your tendons, uh, your ligaments, your cartilages, but especially a nervous condition of any kind, a nerve problem or a nervous condition, I'm going to pray for that right now in Jesus' name. I address this nervous condition right now and I command you to go. I command you loose from these people's bodies. I speak right now to their central nervous system. I speak healing. I speak to any nerve right now that needs healing, needs to be put back in its rightful place. I speak healing and wholeness and wellness to the glory of God. Muscular pain of any kind, any type of ligament, tendon, or cartilage problem, I speak healing into their bodies right now. I speak wholeness and wellness. I speak the living word of God. Be healed. Be made well. Be made whole. And Jesus, we thank you tonight that you are still in the healing business. It is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever to the glory of God. Amen, amen, amen. Let me remind you tonight, God loves you, and he definitely is for you. Again, if you're a first-time uh, guest to us with us tonight, go to ocfc.org slash forward slash guest. We have a video, video for you. If you prayed the prayer to receive Christ tonight, then you can go to ocfc.org slash next steps, next hyphen steps, also, Spanish interpretation will be available right after this service tonight, ocfc.org slash E-N-E-S-P-A-N-O-L. Again, children's services, we already have them at 6, but they're still available on our YouTube, our OCFC YouTube channel. And at 845, that's in 17 minutes, we're going to have a live stream youth service. Boy, I'm so glad you joined with us tonight. We're going to have church Sunday. So I'm making an announcement right now. The only thing that they've asked us to do is to stay three feet apart from one another. We have a 1,200-seat sanctuary, three services. We can easily accommodate that request. No problem. But we are going to have church Sunday. As I close with you tonight, let me bless your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this worship service tonight. Father, I pray over everyone watching, everyone, the few that are here tonight, for the coming days of this week, this is the acceptable year of the Lord, the most blessed time, when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound, opening all the right doors, closing all the wrong doors, keeping us free from harm and danger and accidents and evil, evil people, sickness, disease, from all the powers of darkness, sickness, disease, lack, poverty, depression, suicide, all these debilitating things in people's lives. And I pray, Lord, for the release of your anointing, for the release of your presence, your power, for your grace, your blessing, your favor, the release of the light of God, the salt of the earth that you've called all of us to be. I pray for the release of your anointing for whatever the situation calls for to your glory. In Jesus' name, church, I remind you, Jesus is coming back soon and very soon. God loves you. I love you. Thanks for being with me tonight. See you back Sunday. God bless you. Have a great week.